My name is Veronica Thompson. Y'all always see me on this YouTube. But today, I want to do something a little different. I would like for you guys to know just a little bit more about me than you would normally do. Because everybody on YouTube does show you this and show you that. But today, I'm going to take you to something that you probably don't know nothing about. Well, it starts off when I was a child. When I was about, like, about one or two, um... I had a voice come to me. Mind you, I couldn't talk. But the voice was talking to me, and as a child, I was interacting back. My mom used to say that I had a guardian angel. I said, wow, a guardian angel, me. Wow, okay. So, I was like, okay. I didn't understand what that meant. But I do remember my mom asking me what kind of decals to put on my crib. And I picked out the decal. And, you know, I used to always talk to this voice. And what was weird about it, we had had a fire. And it was just this one little piece of the, the wall of the ceiling that wasn't painted. We still had a singe of smoke look on it. But that's where I, the voice was coming from, and that's where I was talking to. Mind you, I was young then. I'm 52 years old now. And um, what's really where it is, <laughs> I still hear that voice. Actually... It got me through a lot of things in my life. All right. When I was a kid, I had a dream that my mother had died. But it was weird because, like, she was on a cliff and her face was turning polka dots and triangles and squares. They were yellow squares. It was green polka dots. And she was turning different colors, and then she fell to her death. Um, what made that really weird is, when my mother died, my mother died of a heart attack. And my mother's face did turn colors. It went from a dark brown to a gray. And she fell back, and she died. Which is very weird for a little kid to have a dream, but because I didn't understand death, to have a dream that matched so close to reality, it was like really spooky. But we'll get back to that because there's more to that about my mom. Okay, there was many little things like um, I would say things to my mom and she would be amazed because it, it was happening. It was just, to me, I just thought I was just weird. All right, my mom asked me a number. That's when lottery first came out in New York City. I was a little tiny little girl. My mom said, um... What number do you like? I gave her the number, and she hit the number. Um, it was certain things in my life that was really weird. Like, as I got older, it just got... I could say things, and things would just happen. I mean, like, for instance, um, I told a friend of mine in school, I was having a fight with somebody, and she was like, here, take a knife. I said, nah, I'd rather live without the knife than die by the blade. And I'm like, where did this come from? That just sounds so weird, like, I'd rather live without the knife than die by the blade. Which, ironically, she took on a fight that weekend. And two sisters, she was beating up on one sister. The other sister went upstairs, and she got a knife. She stabbed her in the heart and the blade broke. And Bavian was like 13, 13, 12, 13, like that. Yeah, she was dead instantly, man. Which was ironic because I did tell her, now I'd rather live without the knife than die by the blade. And which, in return, she died by the blade. Which was just weird. Things like that. I've been very weird like that. I don't know what to say about it, but... The voice always told me stuff, like certain things not to do or don't go down that block or don't go with them people or it's certain things it, the voice would tell me and I would just do it. And it saved me. I mean, when they're walking, you know, and I'm saying to myself, well, you know, me just, I'm just going to walk around. I'm going to walk around this block. My arm started itching and this voice said loud in my ear, don't. Turn around. Going back home. As soon as I turned around, bullets started flying on the same place I would have turned. I would have turned on that block and would have got the shit shot out of me. 
Bullets was rich, ricocheting off of the side of where I would just turn that. If I had just turned the corner. But the voice said, nah, go on back. I said, man, fuck it. Let me go on back home. And I did what the voice told me to do. You know. And then I was pregnant with my daughter, Monica, my firstborn. Woke up. I said, mom, you're not going to believe this. You know. I had this dream. Dad came in with all these stuffed animals. He came with this big, giant, green frog. This elephant. Um, this, this, um... A, a, a horse that had colors on it, you know. I'm going to tell you something else that was kind of weird. When I was a little kid, you know, like, most people, I don't know if all of y'all remember, but sometimes you always see things that wasn't real. But one night, I saw the weirdest things coming down the hall. I seen an uh, 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 iron, right? It was dancing. Then I saw all the sparkles, then I saw a white horse with rainbows at the tail, and it was just sprinkling off rainbows, and it was dancing, you know, which is ironic, because later on, there was a toy called Rainbow Bright, and her horse looked just like the dream, well, it wasn't even a dream, I was up, it was the same thing I saw when I was a child, I mean, I seen a lot of weird things when I was a kid, I seen one night at the table, it looked like three beds, I swear on everything I love, I know nobody's going to believe me. I know I sound like a nut, but this is God honest truth. I have actually seen people and said, oh, my God, they're going to die. And they and they die the next day. It's weird. I mean, sometimes I'll be walking down the street. I feel this number. Play it. Never come straight. Weird. I don't know. It doesn't happen all the time, but just once in a while, it just, I could make a lot of money, or I could lose a lot in the hobby, but I'm not a gambler, so I learned my lesson, don't gamble. But for that, it's weird, you know, because when I was 18 years old, I had a bike accident. Not the kind of bike accident that you would think of a bike accident. Nah, nah. I'm speeding because I saw my boyfriend. So I was going to speed around St. John's Park. Now, in, this, in the 70s, in the early 80s, when you come out of St. John's Park where the baseball field and where the swings was at, that sidewalk was like about four inches high. No exaggeration to the ground. The curb to the ground was really high, really. Two cars were parked, and they were parked tightly. I'm speeding on my bike. Forgot. I ain't got no brakes. I'm speeding. And by the time I did get a chance to stop, I stopped in the bike, handlebar the piece, bounced up and hit me, bow, right in my damn neck. And I said, oh, man, I felt strange. Went across the street, leaned on my bike like this with both of my hands on the bike. The sun, when I went to sleep, was like right here. All right. When I woke up, the sun was over here. I said, oh, somewhere along the line, I must have passed out. And they said I had to. Because of the accident I had, I would have had to pass out. But by me leaning on my bike in such a way, I never fell. I never fell off my bike. In fact, I came to and I rode my bike home. As soon as I got home, I started coughing up blood. Okay. Now, I got to, my father came home, like, you seen, I'm telling you where the, the sun was. All right, my father didn't come home until, like, midnight. Due to my mother, was real sick, and she was scared of hospital. She had high blood pressure, really bad, drinking, and alcohol was kicking her butt, and she was going through cirrhosis of the liver, which she didn't even know that's what she was going through. So my mom would be in a lot of pain, and, you know, it was just mad crazy. So I didn't want to upset her by telling her, like, I'm spitting up blood. So my father came in the room. He turned on the light. He said, what's that? I said, that was me. I was coughing. And he hurried up and took me to the hospital. So, all right, I'm in the hospital, laying in the bed. I'm like, okay. So this nurse and my mother comes in. My mother starts talking to me, pampering me, and putting a scarf on my head. And, you know, trying to make me feel good. And the nurse is like, oh, this is your baby, blah, blah, blah. I felt like it was a bone, something in my throat. So I felt like I should cough it out. But I couldn't stop coughing. I, it started becoming like I couldn't stop. The more, and then they kept saying, your face is blowing up. Now, mind you, 
My mother is standing there. She suffered with severe high blood pressure. When I say severe to the point that my mother would have to go into a quiet room and she would be there for like three or four days before her pressure go down. You know, they, the doctors would look at my mother and say, damn, how the hell are you walking around with your pressure this damn high? You should be dead. No, not my mother. My mother wasn't dead. She was alive and kicking. But that particular day was like a real sad day. My mom looked at me. She was like, my baby. So she, they took her out the room because she was hysterical. She was just going off. So they took her out the room. So they put me in a wheelchair. But mind you, there was a nurse there. And if this nurse is alive, if she ever sees this video, she'll remember me. Because she kept saying, I'm going to get somebody. I, and she was hurt because I wasn't letting her hand go for shit. Why? Because I was scared. I'm, I'm like, what? I'm 18 years old. I'm thinking I'm about to fucking die. This is it. This is, I'm about to fuck die right now. You're not going nowhere. You, you, you better scream for help because you're not going nowhere. You got on white. You, you into that medical shit, bitch. You're not going nowhere. And I meant that. I was scared to death, man. My mom was out the room. I'm in there all by myself, and they're trying to get me in the wheelchair. So they roll me in the wheelchair, and they roll me into another room. And my mother's standing over there, and my mother's looking at me, and this is what my mother said. She said, oh, my God. Oh, poor baby. Oh, my God. Poor, 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 poor. And she started realizing, that's the scarf she put on my head. And my mother realized, oh, my God, that's my baby. Oh, and then they had to take her to a quiet room. They had to go and take me. I had to get a chest tube. Okay. So I got a chest tube. Now I'm in Kings County. Mind you, I'm in a ward where everybody in there was already 50 and 60. There was nobody young in my room. I was the youngest person in the room. They were nice. They were nice to me. They wasn't mean. They, wasn't, they were nice to me. I used to say good morning to them and everything. So one day I had a difficulty. Yeah, it was, it was a real severe difficulty I died and when I died it was weird because like I hear everybody talking about where they they went to go see God and they went to go I went back to Albany projects in the back slope looking at my window because my window was in the back 14 G you could look to 1008 and to 1400 1414 so I'm I'm looking from the bottom looking straight up to my window told my going home but instead of me walking, I just stopped and just looked up at the window. And all of a sudden, everything just started spinning, spinning. I just, everything just started spinning. And as it started to slow down, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a curtain. Well, actually, I'm just seeing designs. It wasn't even looking like a curtain. It was just designs, just spinning. And next thing they slowed down. I mean, I'm, I'm not looking at the window anymore. I'm in the hospital and... The people in the room was screaming, thank you, God, thank you, Jesus, oh, God, thank you, because they knew I died. My heart stopped, and they came in it, and they brought me back to life. Okay, so this is the weird part. Mind you, I always had this voice, you know, and after that, it got real powerful. I started getting real weird. I could say things and things would manifest. I could dream things. Like one time I had the craziest dream. I dreamt that I seen some man driving down Albany Avenue. I don't know this man. Never met this man before. Don't even know him. He don't know me. And he was staring at me as he drove by. And I was staring at him like, the hell are you looking at? Went downstairs the next morning. <laughs> Went to go get me some orange juice from across the street at Isaac's store. That's when Isaac had a store. Right? So I went over there. Got get ready to go to the store and I see the car, the same fucking car, the same fucking man, staring at me, going down the same fucking block. I said, "Woo, that you can't? How do you? Is that deja vu? No, I don't know. Look, I'm not trying to jive you. I'm not playing no games. This is not no front. Um, it's other stuff that happened, but you know what? I think let me see. It, you know, it." I don't have no reason to lie because this is my life, all right? I'm not trying to sound good for nobody's ears because actually I was good keeping this to myself. But I figured, like, 
what the heck? It's not going to hurt to share, you know? You don't know me. I don't know you. It's up to you to believe or believe not. I don't really care because I'm the one who died and came back. I'm the one that's here right now able to tell you something that you had never seen because some people don't get to go to heaven or go to hell because some of us is not meant to completely die because it wasn't meant for me to go all the way to the light because all of a sudden this strange thing just happened. It just, it just went dark, was spinning. All of a sudden I saw light and this it was a curtain when it stopped, but it was just weird. It was I didn't have all that other experience, you know, but there's some more stuff to tell you guys, but I don't want to tell you all in one shot because I'll be talking for hours, and that, that I don't feel like talking for hours because, you know, if you don't believe me, you just don't. But the truth is the truth, you know. I have no reason to lie. Every story that I'm going to tell you after this is going to be a continuation of this. So, I'm just going to tell you part of my life, the things that went on in my life. I don't know if it happens for everybody, but it happens for me. And by the way, I love looking at the sky. I love the beautiful clouds. I love the sky. I love life. I love trees. I love nature. And I love my creator. For y'all who don't understand, peace. And for the other ones that don't understand, love you. God bless you. You know, there's only one God and the God that you know. And you look like me. Believe me, our God is powerful. Find out who he is. Pray to him. Amen. Peace.